Hello and welcome to another TIA Thursday. The last time we talked about multi-user projects and we actually worked with a multi-user project, um, but not on a server or something, but on the same PC using two, two separate people and, uh, uh, and instances of TIA portal and working on the same project. That's not the standard case that two people work on the same laptop at the same time or on the same PC. Um, that's why this time I will show you how you can set up a, a multi-user server in your network. I first wanted to set this up on the internet and leave it open so you can play around a little bit with it, but I couldn't make it run on the internet. But now I'm using it on a local network here. I've got my PC. You see the desktop of my PC. There's a huge PC standing on there, a tower PC. And I have a laptop, right? This is my work laptop, say hi to my work laptop. Um, and this work laptop and the PC, they are currently in the same network. In my home network here, uh, using my router that's somewhere there, accessing the internet as well. Um, this one is with Wi-Fi and the PC is wired into it, but they are in the same network. So they have some kind of connection. And I'm using this laptop as my multi-user server. So um, the project itself will sit on this laptop and I can work with my PC on it and I can work with every other PC in this network. I could work on this project here using this multi-user server project <clears throat> also from this laptop. So theoretically, I could give this laptop to someone else. He can work on this. I can work on my laptop. We will both work on the same project as shown in the last video. So I've got the server already running here. I would just show you how to connect and then I will show you how to set it up. <clears throat> It took me some while, so it's a little bit annoying actually, but it's possible. <laughs> That's the important thing here. I have my multi-user project here that I want to make to a multi-user project. Right now it's just local on my PC. I want to make this public, public to my multi-user partners. Um, project, multi-user, manage multi-user servers. And there in this list, I only have my local multi-user server. And I only have my multi uh, local multi-user server. This is only for my PC. I want to get on the laptop that I placed down there right? on the laptop. So I have to go to manage servers and I have to add my laptop somehow. We can add server connections here. I will double click and it asks me for, hey, do you have the server data? I will show you later where we can get that server data when I'm setting up the uh, multi-user server on this PC because you can get all the data from there. I have this prepared already from the laptop, so I would just put in the data I have from the laptop. The alias doesn't matter. That's just the name you want to recognize it from. I'll call this, uh, wait, yeah, Philip. That's my name. <laughs> if you were wondering, that's my real name. Um, Philip Laptop, I used the HTTPS protocol. Now we need a host and a port. A host and the port, as I said, this can be found during the installation of the multi-user server. I will show it to you later. Um, it is in my network, simply the network IP of the laptop. So this is my laptop's IP. I found it out. You can even set it, right? This is my server's IP. And in the installation of the multi-user server, you will get a port that is that it is connected to. A port is basically, hey, this is a door. Go through this door. You can find the multi-user server. And it is this one here. So this is the data and you see I've got an URL now. So theoretically I could use it through the internet, but I couldn't make it run. I took like one hour and I was like, why doesn't it work? So I made it the local server here. I click on add and now I have my local multi, uh, my not local anymore. I have my multi-user server in my network. So I can go again, project multi-user manage. And now I can select the laptop. And here we go. I am now actually looking onto my laptop. The first time you do this, it didn't show up right now. The first time you do this, you will have to log in. You will have to log in and the login data you have to specify on the laptop, right? That's a green bar, so you can, because of the green screen, you can look through the green bar there. It's pretty cool <laughs> looking through the, that, the laptop. Um, yeah, we have to set up the uh, multi-users in the laptop. I will show you how to do that when I'm there, when I'm installing the multi-user project on my PC. So here we go. I can add the project. That's that's what we did last time already, right? So now I add the project and it's actually adding the project into my PC. 
So now I uh, into my laptop. So now my laptop has this project and everyone in the network can work with this project. That's pretty neat. How to work with it, I told you in the last video. So check that out if you don't have yet. Um, this time is just about setting this up. Yeah, that's pretty neat. The only problem if my laptop now shuts down, I can't access that anymore. That's how it is. <laughs> that's how it is with servers. Yeah, got this, right? I got this. So this is basically how I connect now to it. It was so easy because it is already set up. Setting it up is a little bit different. Um, there's some steps that you need to take, right? Let me push Tia portal to the side. Let me explain for a second. Um, can I do this? Oop. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, the first step is when you install TIA portal, you have to select, there is a mo there is options. There's like packages you install when TIA portal, when you install TIA portal. And there's under options, there's multi-user server or multi-user protocol, something like this, something multi-user. You have to install that. The standard thing is it is active. So if you didn't change anything during the installation, it is active. You have installed the multi-user server on your device. Um, if you have not done that, you can just run the TR portal setup again and just select the multi-user server. <clears throat> yeah. And bloop. <laughs> the second and third thing that we are going to do now is the following here. When you installed the multi-user server on the device that should host the service, um, it's here, right? Multi-user server, this has been installed as well. Multi-user server, I'm using version 15.1, configuration. Right? This is the configuration, we have administration. Let's first go into the configuration. So I double click in here, I go in here, right? Double click and then it asks me for, for administration rights. You need to be admin to run that. That's how it is. Uh, let me close this because I already have it open. Actually, let me open it again because now I had two instances. I don't know if that works. <clears throat> so I've got it open here. Right? And there we see no data, not installed, stopped. Everything is bad. <laughs> we'll get to this. <clears throat> to open the server, to create it on this PC. So now what I what I do is basically I install it as well on the PC. So my laptop can access multi-user projects that I have installed on the PC, which makes more sense to not have a multi-user server on a laptop, but that's a different story. <clears throat> I have to choose some settings. There's the protocol, which has to do a little bit with safety. You can use HTTP or HTTPS. I recommend HTTPS because it's more safe. I think the S even stands for security or something, I think. Then we have a port. Just leave it as the standard. That's the port that is all network packages that arrive from any source are put into a specific port. The port 8735 will be reserved for multi uh, for tier portal multi-user project uh, communication. So I just leave it as this is. We just need to remember this for later on, right? We need to access this data on the laptop if, or on any other PC that wants to use those multi-user projects. Timer profile, fast, leave it as default. This is just how long is it going to wait if it fails? How long does it wait? <clears throat> Security, create a new self-signed signature uh, certificate. This is just for network um, technology. If two devices want to communicate, you need a certificate that shows, hey, this is legit, everything is okay. That also runs out after a certain time. So you have to revalidate that somehow, which is uh, automatically happening. If not, then you don't have administration rights because those use administration rights to install the certificate on your machine. We could make an own one, an existing one, but I, will, I want to create a new one. I always create new ones. <clears throat> then the next, this is red from the beginning on actually. For me, it's already filled out because I chose already a network a device on the machine, on my PC. I chose a directory. Where do you save the data? And this is where I save it, just a local storage, just anywhere, basically. This is just where all the projects are going to be saved, where the multi-user server is going to be installed. Then I can hit install a service, right? I install the service. This will take a second or two. And now it's installing the multi-user server. It actually gives some errors and warnings. I don't know what those are. You can click on the view log here. And there you have a list of success, info, success, warning, important, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Uh, where's the error? It gave me an error, didn't it? <clears throat> error. Registrate. <laughs> what? <laughs> error registering performance values. Cannot loan counter name. Ah, it doesn't matter. 
that's okay. It's just with my PC, it still works. Even if it has some errors, it still works. Why I show you this log, it's important. You have to scroll through somewhere and at some point, it's going to give you important. The following information is required by TR portal on each device to connect to the server. And it's this data here. And it's this data. This data. <laughs> um, this is the important data. This is what I put in in the beginning. If you remember when I added a new multi-user server here, right? Add new server connection. I need a name. This is a random name that you can give. This is this PC. And the rest is also written there. So the first is HTTPS. So it's using the HTTPS protocol. HTTPS. Host. Host is Philip PC. Right. Host. I wonder if that works. Doesn't work because ah, yeah, it works. And the last is the port. This is the port behind the double point. Right. So I can use this. I can do this. Add. And now I have a multi-user server installed on my PC and I will access it using this one here, right? Here we go. It has certificate thing. It has a lot of more, but this is the important thing. I'm using HTTPS. The server is Philip PC and it is 8735 is <clears throat> the port. You find a lot of other data up here, a little bit higher there. You can find IP addresses and so on, but those well, are just advanced. You can use them as well, but I use this. That's as simple as it is. <clears throat> yeah. So I've got this now as the multi-user server, and it's pretty much done. That's that's pretty much it. The service is running here in the background. I can also click on the X here Bloop. to get this Bloop. gone. <clears throat> the service is running in the background, not yet, because we see client info. This is the information. So if you don't go into this document here, into the log. You also have the necessary information on top here, right? Using HTTPS, this is the host, and this is the, uh, so this is the server name, and this is the port. You have this information always available. The only thing right now, the service is not started. It's installed, but it's not running. I can click on start service, and now the multi-user server is running on this, on this PC. So the laptop can access it, and my PC can also access it. And everything in my network can access this multi-user server now and put projects on there. So I've got this, I put it to the side. Now, if I have a project, I haven't tested this. Test, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't work, it's okay. I'm sorry, if it doesn't work, I won't fix it right now because that might take some time. So I can use the laptop, it's still running, so I can access the laptop, but I could also use, this is this PC. It asks me for this certificate. As I said, we use a new certificate every once in a while. You have to accept it because, well, it's safety. Okay. And now I can actually add projects to this server, which is running on my PC. So if I add a project to this server, my laptop can also access it. Pretty great. Pretty cool, actually. <clears throat> yeah. Um, that's how you set up the server. Right? That's how you set up the server. Uh, also, not too difficult. Right. The only difficult thing was for me trying to get this on the internet and it didn't work. And I was like, why doesn't it work? I might make this run later on, but I don't know for now. There's one more tool. There's also um, some safety involved. Usually if I would access now a multi-user server on the laptop, for example, I would need to put in a password and a username. Right? Password, username, safety. Not everyone should be allowed to get on there. So how do I get to this? This is called administration and there was another tool installed on the machine that uses, um, well, the, that, that is used in multi-user communication and this is the administration. In administration, you can just check, hey, this project, how many versions does it have? Hey, which user can access it? Stuff like this. So let's quickly open it. <clears throat> and you see in the beginning it's empty. So I have to add a server here as well. So I will add my laptop. If I can remember the pin, uh, the IP. That's this. It's HTTPS. Uh, this is again the same thing we always see, right? So this is now the laptop project. So on the laptop project, I would now need to log in onto the laptop. The thing is, it is telling me, hey, 
you, well, this is this is German, <laughs> difficult to understand for you, but it's asking me, do you want to use the current user? This is the user on my PC. The user from my PC actually is not installed on my laptop. So the laptop administers everything that's going on there. So the laptop needs to have a login here. And the laptop actually has a login. It's the same name because I'm lazy and it's got a password. Blah, 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 blah. But that's on the that's on the laptop. Right? This was on the laptop. I can now go to user administration. I'm sorry that it's German. I can I switch to English? Oh, I can switch to English. I can go to user management, user administration, and I can add new users. Right? There's managers that can do everything. There's contributors that can upload. There's members that can do upload, download, read, change, and so on and so on. <clears throat> if I want to add users to those, I can click add. The thing is, those users have to be installed in the Windows. Those are Windows users, right? So a Windows user. I would need to add a user actually in the Windows of my server. If you don't know how that works, well, there's many, many videos on this. And your network administrator, uh, administrator definitely has an idea how this works. Right? Just adding Windows users, I would need this. And I would need to add the Windows user now here and log in later on with the Windows user login. Yeah. Um, the last thing we see here in the administration is the multi-user laptop right now. You see this? This multi-user laptop, this is the project that my laptop has. Right. This is the project. If I go here and I go project multi-user and I check out my laptop. This is the multi-user laptop project that I have. And I can, in the uh, administration tool here, I can check the project, right? I can check, hey, who has a local session right now? What's the history? I can check out many, many things, much, much data on here. When was this project created? Stuff like this. So pretty neat, pretty neat. Yeah. <clears throat> Those are the parts that you need to set up the server to manage the server a little bit. Uh, making accounts, as I said, is on the Windows side. So I won't get into this, into the user management. Um, but there's many, many videos that talk about exactly that. Uh, it's more on the Windows side. I still like the multi-user thing overall, right? Overall, it's pretty neat. Getting into it, it can be a drag in the beginning. But once you have it set up, it's very easy. Setting it up is on a level from easy, medium, difficult. It's pr definitely on the difficult level. So don't get frustrated in the first moments. It takes some time. Mm, there could be a lot of errors and warnings and stuff like this. But in the end, you can make it run. I'm pretty confident. If you can't make it run, if you have any questions left, just leave them in the comments below. I hope this video helped you a little bit. And... Um, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.